So you've noticed your dog urinating blood. What does this mean? Is it bad? Will it go away? What can you do? Watch this video as I'll be going over the top 8 most common causes of bloody urine in dogs as well as how it can be diagnosed, treated and prevented. Hey guys, Dr. Peacher. I'm a veterinarian from South Africa. And I often see dogs presenting to the vet clinic with bloody urine and owners looking very concerned. And rightfully so, as this is often an indication that there is some serious underlying problem. We often don't really notice bloody urine right away. I mean, what kind of person would be staring at the dog urinating all the time? But when you see that that beautiful new white carpet that you bought are stained red, orange or brown, you may get upset enough to start investigating who the culprit was and this is usually around this time that the dog is presented to the vet clinic. Now, hematuria is a fancy scientific name, basically meaning blood in heron. Now, there are many different causes, which makes it quite difficult to get to the exact diagnosis very quickly. And we often have to follow a very systematic approach, which often requires extensive number of tests. Now, most of these cases will present very similarly to the vet clinic. Your dog will probably show a combination of the following clinical signs. Pain, discomfort and straining when urinating, frequent squatting and only being able to pass small amounts of bloody urine at a time. The dog may also display other signs of systemic illness such as anorexia, vomiting, lethargy and the increase in urination and drinking behaviors. Now your vet will need to follow a very systematic approach to get to the exact diagnosis. Now your vet will start off by trying to get a thorough history of your dog's condition and you may expect questions to be asked such as how old is your dog? How long ago you started noticing the straining of urination? If you noticed any blood pouring out of the private part or if it was just dribbling of urine? What kind of diet is your dog on? If the dog is castrated, if it's a male, if your dog had any access to rat bait, if your dog experienced any recent trauma such as a dog bite or a car accident and if your dog displayed any other signs of systemic illness. Your vet will then proceed to perform a proper clinical examination where he will visually inspect and palpate the external genitalia, the bladder, the kidneys, the prostate and the abdomen. He will also listen very carefully to the heart and look at the dog's gums. Now based on the information your vet acquired up until this point, you may also opt to perform further blood tests, urinalysis, urine culture, x-rays or ultrasound. So now that you have a pretty good idea of what we are looking for when we first see dogs with bloody urine, let's look at the top 8 most common causes of bloody urine in dogs individually. Number 1. A lower urinary tract infection. This is probably the most common cause and is mostly focused on the bladder and the urethra which is basically the tube connecting the bladder to the outside world and allows the urine to pass through the body. Now the causes for UTI is mostly related to the anatomy of the urethra, the vulva or the prepuce. It could be hormone related incontinence in spayed bitches as well as bladder polyps that can form anitis of infection. Now the diagnosis of UTI will usually include a urinalysis with a sediment evaluation where we basically look for signs of bacteria, infection and inflammation in the urine. And ideally we would want to send a urine sample to the lab so that we are able to know exactly what type of bacteria we are dealing with. Now the treatment for UTI is mainly antibiotics based on the urine culture and this can last up until 6 weeks and we might also prescribe anti-inflammatory drugs to help with the pain. Next up is upper urinary tract disease. This includes mainly the kidneys and the ureter, which is basically the tube that connects the kidneys to the bladder. Now the causes for upper urinary tract disease is mostly anatomical or structural deformities such as cystic kidney disease, could be related to a metabolic disease such as kidney stones, or just infection of the kidneys causing a nephritis, which is basically inflammation of the kidneys. Now in order to distinguish these causes, we would ideally want to take x-rays to look for kidney stones, perform an abdominal ultrasound to look for cystic kidney disease, perform a urinalysis and sediment evaluation to look for any urine tract infections, and we may also perform blood work to test for any underlying kidney damage, where we will specifically look at the STMA, creatinine and urea concentrations in the blood. Now treatment will usually include surgery to remove the kidney stones, 
although this is more of a specialist procedure and might be referred to a specialist facility. We can give antibiotics based on the urine culture and anti-inflammatories if there's pain. And if the dog has underlying kidney failure, we might need to have to put him on blood pressure meds, anti-nausea meds and some diet modification where we will need to put him on a special prescription diet. Now I've made another video on kidney failure, so please watch that after this video. Number three is urolithiasis or bladder stones. Now these are typically caused by genetics, nutrition or due to chronic infection from anitis that hasn't been resolved. Now you do get different types of bladder stones and these do appear differently with the diagnostic procedures that we follow. X-rays, for example, will work quite well for stones such as calcium oxalate, struvite and silicate, but we often also have to perform an abdominal ultrasound to look for other types of stones, such as a urate, cysteine and xanthine that will not be visible on X-rays. Once again, we will have to perform a urinalysis and sediment evaluation to look at the urine pH, any crystals in the urine and to see if there's any concurrent urinary tract infections. But the only real way to get a definitive diagnosis is to send the physical stone to a special lab for evaluation. Now treatment will depend on what kind of stones we are dealing with but unfortunately with calcium oxalate stones or any other stone that blocks the urethra thus preventing the dog to urinate will have to be surgically removed where we basically cut into the bladder and take them out and then suture it closed again. This is called a cystotomy. But if we are dealing with a struvite stone, we can try some diet modification. We will put the dog on a special diet, add some medicine to decrease the pH, and some antibiotics if there's a concurrent urine tract infection. But these may take a couple of months to resolve. Number four is prostatitis or benign prostatic hyperplasia. Now we often see this in older male dogs that hasn't been castrated. Now benign prostatic hyperplasia is when the prostate gets larger due to the stimulation of testosterone and prostatitis is usually due to an ascending urinary tract infection that causes infection and inflammation of the prostate. Now the diagnosis of prostatitis or BPH is quite simple as it's quite easy to feel during a rectal examination where we will quite literally feel the prostate being enlarged. The dog will typically have a lot of abdominal pain when we palpate at the back of the abdomen and sometimes they can also have a bit of a fever and a reduced appetite. But the best way to get a definitive diagnosis is to take an ejaculate sample and to study it under a microscope to look for any prostatic disease. Now castration is the treatment of choice and the prostate will typically reduce in size over the course of four weeks. But if you want to breed with the dog, we do have the option to give anti-androgen medication such as dalmidinone acetate. With the enlarged prostate, it usually presses down on the colon and this can cause constipation in some dogs. And if this is the case, we might give an enema and some fecal softness for the first couple of days after surgery to help them pass the stool. And if it's prostatitis, we will also add strong antibiotics and pain medication. Now the fifth most common cause is estrus. Now this is quite normal to see in dogs going into heat, but it may be quite alarming to see for first time pet owners. So you'll usually see blood coming out of the vulva, but you will concurrently also see that the vulva is swollen and the dog will have an increase in urination. What is important to know with these cases is if the dog has any other signs of systemic disease. If not, then no treatment is necessary and this may last for up to three weeks but will usually go away when the dog goes out of heat. But if the discharge starts to smell off, becomes purulent, the dog stops eating, develops a fever or becomes lethargic, then we need to investigate further as this can point more towards a pyometra which is infection of the uterus and this does require immediate veterinary attention. Number six, systemic cargillopathy. Now this is quite a complicated one and usually requires an extensive list of tests to get to the exact diagnosis. Common causes may include a blood clotting disorder, an immune mediated thrombocytopenia where the immune system basically attacks and destroys the blood platelets, some types of snake bites and anticoagulant rodenticide toxicities which we typically find in rat poison. Now the diagnosis will usually start with the physical examination where we will typically see subdermal hemorrhages, which we call ecchymosis or petechia, which basically looks like bruises. 
it's round or oval, non-raised patches of the skin that is discolored red or purple. The dog may be lethargic, we will see pale mucous membranes, an increase in heart rate, and in severe cases, the dog may even start to bleed out of his genitalia, his rectum, the mouth or the nose, which we refer to as epistaxis. Now your vet will probably opt to perform further tests such as blood work to look at the number of red blood cells, number of platelets and the clotting times. He may make a blood smear to look at the morphology of the red blood cells and the blood platelets. And he may perform special tests known as insaline agglutination tests or a Coombs test where we basically look for any signs of an autoimmune disease. Now the treatment will depend on the online cause. If the dog is severely affected with a very low red blood cell count, he will need to be hospitalized, receive a blood transfusion as well as oxygen supplementation. If the dog ingested rat poison, we will need to start on vitamin K therapy. If the dog was bitten by a snake, we will need to give a specific antivenom. And if we discover that it was due to an immune mediated disease, we'll need to start the dog on immunosuppressive therapy as well as gastric protectants. Number seven, cancer. This is luckily not so common and the most common type of cancer that we see is called TCC or transitional cell carcinoma, which is a cancer of the bladder, but we also sometimes see cancer of the kidneys. These can sometimes be palpated during the physical examination, which will basically feel as an abnormal mass on the kidney or the bladder. The dog will present with similar signs to a UTI, the vet may opt to perform a vaginoscopy in female dogs and a cystoscopy in male dogs where we basically insert a camera through the genitalia to look for signs of any specific growths along the urinary tract and ideally we'd like to take a biopsy of these masses and send it to the lab for definitive diagnosis. Treatment will usually be a combination of surgical removal, chemotherapy and radiation. And lastly, number eight, trauma. Now this can be caused by either trauma where the dog was perhaps hit by a car or attacked by another dog or it can be caused secondary to a bladder stone blocking the urethra as this will cause the kidneys to continue to produce urine with the bladder expanding and expanding up to the point where the wall cannot take it anymore and the bladder will actually then rupture. We'll usually start with a physical examination to get to a diagnosis where the dog will be extremely painful when palpated on the abdomen. The dog may have other symptoms such as a fever or inappetence or vomiting. We will need to take an x-ray to make sure that the bladder wall is intact and we will also perform an abdominal ultrasound to look for any free fluid as this may indicate signs of a peritonitis which is basically inflammation of the abdominal wall which can be secondary to urine leaking into the abdomen, causing an inflammatory reaction. And this is what causes the severe pain when pressing on the abdomen of the dog. Now, if the bladder is ruptured, this is unfortunately very bad news and carries a very guarded prognosis. So in these cases, we generally do advise euthanasia. So as a general rule of thumb, if a dog urinates blood for more than 24 hours, you will need to take him to the vet. But if your dog is not able to urinate at all, you need to take him to the vet as soon as possible as this is an emergency situation and the dog can die if left untreated. Ensure that your dog always have access to clean fresh water during the recovery phase. Now if your vet prescribes antibiotics, it is very important to finish the whole course even after your dog gets better as if you stop too early your dog may develop antibiotic resistance and having an antibiotic resistant bladder infection is just a nightmare and usually does not end too well. Remember to take your dog for follow-up examinations so that we can see if the dog is responding well to the treatment plan and if we need to adjust the treatment protocol. And just overall, remember that you are your dog's first line of defense to their health. So monitor their urine behavior closely and act quickly if it is necessary. Thank you for watching this video. Let me know down in the comments if your dog ever had bloody urine and what you and your vet did to help diagnose it and what the exact cause of it eventually was. And if you found the video to be helpful, I would really appreciate it if you can leave a like, share it with your friends and your family. And if you are new to my channel, consider subscribing as I'll be posting new videos on interesting pet related topics every week. And as always, have a lucky day and I'll see you in another video next week. Cheers.